Hi, I'm Jennifer Stipe and I work for PA Counseling Services. I'm contracted with Columbia School District as the SAP or Student Assistance Program Liaison or Assessor. And I'd like to take a few minutes to tell you about what my role is here within the district. So the million dollar question is, what is SAP? In the mid 1980s, the state of Pennsylvania launched a pilot program called the Student Assistance Program in four school districts and it originally sought to help students um, struggling with substance abuse issues, but quickly they discovered that the program um, needed to be expanded to help students with a variety of mental health issues as well as substance abuse issues. And today, we at SAP kind of say um, we look for any barriers to learning. So basically anything that would keep a student from being successful in school. SAP programs can look a little bit different from school to school um, or even from building to building within a district. They follow mostly the same um, guidelines, but they function a little bit differently in each school district. And some of that is dependent upon the contract that the school has. So for example, last year, I was in um, the high school and also the middle school on the Hill, and I provided SAP services one day a week for students. Now, right before the quarantine hit last school year, the district received a grant to increase services. So I moved from a one day a week position to a three day a week position and, and expanded to the entire district, which is pretty exciting because that means that um, SAP will be in um, both middle schools, Taylor and on the Hill, the high school and soon to be Park Elementary. In each building, we have a SAP team and the team meets once a week. And on the teams are different individuals that um, have been trained in student assistance and in the process by the state. And some of those individuals are um, school administrators, school counselors, the nurses, um, school psychologist, school social worker, and different teacher representatives. So then what happens is when we meet as a team, we get referrals that come in. And it's very important to note that the program is confidential and um, it does require parent and student permission. So a student can't participate if the parent says no or if a student isn't willing. But then once they're part of the SAP process, that becomes um, confidential. So we can't really, anybody that's a member of the SAP team can't discuss any students that, we, that are referred. And then once the referral comes in, we as a team take a look at it and decide if it is appropriate for SAP. So sometimes they're not. Sometimes there might be a referral that comes in that let's just say that um, it would be appropriate for the school social worker to take that and um, kind of meet with the student or meet with the family. Or for example, maybe um, it's something that the school counselor says, I'm already working on this with the student. They're already involved in a lot of support services and um, it's not really an appropriate SAP referral. Uh, that doesn't mean that it sits on our case for the entire year. It doesn't mean that if um, another referral comes in that we won't take a look at that. But um, sometimes it's just not appropriate for SAP. But when they are, then we, um, assign a case manager, which is one of those representatives on the team, and they work on getting the um, parent and student permission and explaining SAP to the family and to the student. They also will um, send out the surveys. You might have received those before, um, a, you know, a teacher survey or you know, an, an administrative survey um, asking questions about a student. So they work on collecting data and getting the signed permission forms. And then um, once the signed permission forms come in, that's where I come in. So I meet with students and I do a uh, screening and a comprehensive assessment. Now those assessments can be extremely long. So I, when I do call a student out of class, I am aware of that. Um, I, I try to sometimes break it up into two parts where I'm not pulling the student out of class, the entire class, but sometimes it does happen. And I would encourage you to feel free to tell me if, like, if, for example, if there's a quiz or a test going on that day and I try to pull a student out, I can reschedule and I can work around that. Um, or if a student's really struggling, 
um, or maybe hasn't shown up to class in a really long time and all of a sudden they're there and I'm trying to pull them out. Um, I do try to work with, with teachers on that. Um, I realize, you know, we're kind of all in this together and um, I would ask you too that you would um, keep in mind too that the student, for whatever reason that they're being referred, is probably significant and um, definitely the the assessment is an important piece of you know getting them services or the help that they may need too. So once I complete that, um, I will meet with the student and share my recommendations. So I take in all that information from surveys that come back from parents, um, teachers, school administrators, um, the time that I spend with the student and asking them questions and, and doing the assessment work. And I come up with recommendations that I feel might be helpful for the student. And that could be anything from in-school um, services or supports to out of school. So I share my recommendations with the student, with the parent, and then also with the SAP team. And then I work to help the student and the um, family um, or sometimes connecting them in the, in the school with the appropriate people and getting them the, the help or the services that they need. I also do follow up with students throughout the school year then and then also into next year. So now it's the beginning of the school year. I'm meeting with some students that I met with last year, especially over um, this long extended summer break with the quarantine. Um, I just want to check in with students, make sure that they're okay, and to see if they want to um, continue in SAP, just getting check-ins the next school year. Who can make a referral? Obviously you can, and we re encourage that. Um, so teachers, any, any faculty, any staff at the school, parent can make a referral about their child, a, another student can refer um, a student or a friend that they have concerns about, and even a student can refer themselves if they're looking for some help. So what um, are you looking for when you make a referral? So we like to say that you're looking for observable behaviors. So that can be really obvious. For example, you can overhear a student talking about using drugs or trying drugs or alcohol for the first time. You could um, have a student disclose something to you. Maybe they tell you that they're cutting um, or struggling with um, an eating disorder. Maybe you see things like you see cut marks on a student's arm um, that weren't there before or um, you know something like that. And, to also things that might not be so obvious. They might not be saying things, but you're observing behaviors like a change in grades or um, maybe a change in their peer groups or who they're hanging out with, or maybe they're sleeping a lot or not coming to class, um, a whole variety of things. And that's why we call them observable behaviors, something that you notice, um, that might not quite be right. Um, and any kind of like social concern or academic concern or family concern, anything, again, we go back to those barriers to learning, anything that you feel that a student might be struggling with that would um, cause them to um, not be successful at school or as successful as they could be. So after this video, there will be somebody from your building telling you how to make that referral. Um, most likely it will be through uh, Warwickware electronically, but it might look a little bit different from building to building. So I'm hoping that somebody in your building can give you the specifics for, for your building. Finally, I wanna thank you for watching this video. I get a little taste of what you guys do every day trying to teach virtually. Um, if you have any questions about SAP, I'd love to hear from you. I am in the district three days a week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Uh, my office, even though I will be in all buildings, uh, my office is on the hill in room 123. My extension is 3468, which I believe I am on the phone list. And just a heads up, it does look like I have a district email, but I do not. So you can contact me at my PA counseling email address, which is jlstipe at pacounseling.com. Thanks so much.